Hello. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, it began with a connection error to begin with. Bona sifiwe. I hope you guys are there, even as we're waiting for you to load up a little bit. Let's just lift up the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we exalt you. We magnify you, O God. How great are you, Lord Jehovah God. The name above all names. You're worthy of praise, O God. You are the mighty man of war, the lion and the lamb. We thank you, Jesus. Even as we've seen your glory tonight, O Lord Jehovah, King of glory, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord God, even here in Australia. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God, for your move, Lord. Thank you for the way you're joining us, O God, as servants of the living God, to join together and do the work on, of God in different continents, Father. We exalt you, Lord. Let it be all about you, Jesus, for you are the reason that we gather. You are the reason we work, O God. We are just battle clubs in your hands, Lord Jehovah God. Use us for your glory, Father. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. We bless the churches across the world, O Lord Jehovah God. In every continent, Father, let revival fall. Father, encourage your ministers, encourage your generals, the true ones, Father God, who serve you. Oh, Lord God, who seek your face, may they not quit, may they not despair, may they not get discouraged, oh, Father God. May they continue in the good fight of faith, oh, Lord Jehovah God. Father, we thank you, we worship you, oh, God. We thank you, King of glory, because your word also says that faith, O oh God, is the life of the righteous. We thank you, King of glory. Indeed, our life is found in faith, O oh Lord. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being, Christ Jesus the King. You are everything, Jesus. We worship you. We give you praise, Lord. As the saints are praying, my Father, all over the world, encourage them and let it rain, Lord. Let the glory of God fall. Let me just share with you a vision that the Lord is showing me right now. The Lord is giving me a vision and, you know, I was just trying to understand it as I was praying. And it's people, I can see people praying. The first thing I saw was a house that looked like there was rain inside the house. The house looked wet, like it had rained inside the house. And I was asking God, what am I seeing, Lord? Is this an attack? What is this, Lord? And then the Lord led me with the path of rain. He led me uh, to people who are praying in the house on their knees. And I believe those are the saints of God that are praying all over the world. I'm seeing now also a gathering also of the saints of God in white coming out all over the fields. Um, white, 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 people dressed in white, lifting up the name of Jesus, declaring the glory of God. I tell you, it's time for revival across the continents, and the Lord is reorganizing, and this revival shall not be stopped. Let's continue to pray for one another. Let's continue to pray for all the saints with all kinds of prayers. The, Lord, the Lord's glory is moving. The Lord's presence is amongst us. We worship him. So tonight we've just had a really, really amen. Shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that vision. Thank you for your word. It shall not return to you void, Lord God, but even as the snow and the rain are sent, O God, even to water the land, we thank you that your word is sent to water the saints, O God, to water the harvest, O Lord Jehovah, King of glory, to water what has been planted, O Lord Jehovah, God, and your seed, and we thank you, Lord, that the harvest belongs unto you, O God, and indeed your word shall accomplish what it's sent to accomplish. Thank you, King of glory. We thank you that this word shall not be intercepted or stolen in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've just had a very powerful meeting. Uh, this is in Sydney. I bless the Lord. Uh, and um, I've just met two of the most wonderful pastors ever, sincerely. As in, we connected like this. And, you know, it was a bit funny because um, our host was trying to explain why um, I didn't hug them because I shook their hands. And, you know, the, the, the madam was looking a little confused and she was trying to look like she's wondering whether to hug me or not to hug me. But uh, uh, my host began to explain, you know, we are Kenyan. In Kenya, we don't just hug people. <laughs> so I explained, yes, we must test every spirit before we go hugging. And as we sat down, the Lord began to speak to me and tell me, these are my servants. Uh, the Lord began to show me the humility in their hearts. The Lord began to reveal to me about how they love the Lord, how they call on the name of Jesus. And um, we, we, we really had a great, amazing fellowship, just planning about the work of God. This is a revival church. Um, apparently last year, there was a prophecy that came all the way from Ghana uh, into a different 
different church uh, that's more of a Ghanaian African church, but then this particular church was, was spoken about by a prophet in Ghana about revival. And now you can see, last year I didn't know who they were. This year the Lord connects us, and the message the Lord gives me for them is revival, revival, revival. And as we agreed to pray, let me tell you the moment we said, let us pray, when we had finished discussing, talking, sharing our journey. By the way, they started uh, ministry the same time as I started ministry in terms of being a pastor. Isn't the Lord amazing? 2013, just a few months before I did. And by the way, the, the last time I also met uh, some amazing pastors also in Addis who will be coming, by the way, to minister during this revival season that we're going to be having um, in Nairobi. Uh, even they started ministry in 2013. So I believe there's something powerful about the year 2013. The year 2012, quite a number of people began to answer the call of God, began to be reorganized, began to be rearranged. And 2013, quite a number of powerful revival ministries began five years ago. And remember, five is the year of grace. So as they turn five years this year, we are going to see the glory of God and we're going to see the abundant harvest that has come through praying on our knees and calling on the name of Jesus, fasting and crying to God day and night and saying, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing right now but lord we are hungry for more we we want more we want to see your glory you know like moses saying lord show us your glory like moses also saying you know moses you remember moses was taught the paths of god the ways of god yeah so not just who god is but the ways of god you know when you know the ways of god you can capture the heart of god and that's very very powerful in itself so we finished and we said let us pray let me tell you the moment we said let us pray I think heaven was waiting. The glory of God fell. And without even a word, we began to weep before the presence of the Spirit of the living God. We began to yield ourselves to God. We began to say, Lord, we are hungry for you. We need your glory. And it was one united prayer. And these are brethren from Samoa. Isn't God amazing? So these are brethren from Samoa. And then for those of you that don't know what Samoa is, Samoa is a country, okay, like Fiji. <laughs> like Kenya. So that's Samoa. So they are brethren from Samoa that the Lord sent to this wonderful country that is Australia. And then, you know, the Lord united us as Africans and of course the African connection, uh, which is my dear Margaret. And we thank God because for of his time and uh, his glory. So we will be having a social session in Sydney. Imagine that. We don't have the dates yet because of me, really, at the end of the day, because um, my ministry calendar is quite packed, and I do have candidates this year, so I also have to find a balance between my family and ministry this year in particular. Yeah, but we will be having a social session in Sydney. You need to let your family members know. Invite them to like the page. Invite them to begin to understand what is this sozo thing, what is this deliverance, what, what, what is God saying? Because guys, you know, another thing I'm coming to learn is that there is such a, I don't know, how do I put it, Father? How do I put it, Lord? There is a different kind of church that is running parallel to the real church of Jesus Christ. And it's called church, looks like church, but it's not church. And the people in it also have never seen the glory of God, have never known who God truly is, has, have never really seen a move of God. So all they know is this religiosity, this um, counterfeit church, which is not Jesus Christ. And I'm realizing that a lot of what we've, we've had to do and have to keep doing is teaching the real gospel of Jesus Christ and having believers give their lives to Christ because they say they are born again, but people are not walking with God and, and, and their pastors are telling them it's okay. And there's a, a priesthood, that the, the, the one that the Bible talks about that comes through the back door, you know, um, because uh, the real shepherd does not come through the back door. But in this particular church situation, it's shepherds who are coming through the back door and coming and telling people, don't you worry, I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to stand for you. I, and, and, and they are so convincing because they are very loud. And unfortunately, the saints of God have also not learned about uh, deception. And uh, so they are getting caught up in deception. Which brings us again to the topic of today and uh, the last uh, uh, two sermons that I've been ministering on, the Lord has led me to minister on what the prophetic is not and what the prophetic is. You know, today, our meeting together today is by the grace of God as a result of prayer and really prophetic prayer. 
where, you know, and today I was, uh, as I met uh, quite a number of people today, one of the things I was telling them is I attract prophets. I attract prophets. Very often prophets who don't even know that they are prophets. But the people who are attracted to the Sozo ministry are people who are truly hungry for God, people who are truly saying there's much more, people who are saying, I want to see the God of the Bible, people who are feeling a stirring in their spirit. And that in itself is prophetic. And, you know, uh, one person said, you know, I don't think I'm a prophet, but I know I'm an intercessor. And the Holy Spirit was very, very clear that to be an intercessor, to answer the call of God of intercession, already you're moving in the prophetic because what you've done is, you know, the, word, the way the word of God says, the spirit and the bride say, come. Yeah, the spirit and the bride say, come. So as the spirit and the bride begin to say, come, what happens is that as a result of those prayers, as a result of calling on the name of Jesus, people begin to wake up from their slumber. People begin to feel, mm -mm, I need to get off of, of this couch and get on my knees. I, mm -mm, I've been born again for a long time, but my salvation must count for something greater. My salvation for, must count for, 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 for a mighty move of God. My salvation must count for the greatness of Jehovah. And these are the people that the Lord is gathering together in this end time. And they don't realize it, but these are prophets. And you know, when Elijah felt like he was by himself because wickedness had risen in Israel, Ahab and Jezebel were killing prophets. And at one point, Elijah said, I'm the only one left. And the Lord says, no, I have 400 others already in a cave. And this is the time. The Lord is saying there are many children of God, many prophets in the caves. Many, and many of them don't realize. And I assure you that the Sozo platform is a preparation of the prophetics, uh, of prophets to arise, young prophets to arise in their calling. That's why a number of you, when you attend the Sozo session, when you begin to follow this ministry, you suddenly begin to have dreams. It's just that you're not understanding what the dreams are. And I've been requested by a number of people to minister about dreams, which I'm going to do. And you're beginning to have dreams. You're beginning to have very vivid dreams. You're beginning to hear from the Lord very clearly. Why? You're prophets. You're prophets. But for a long time, you've been hidden in the caves and it's time for you to come out. The Lord is getting you out. The Lord is raising you out. The Lord is beginning to give you a boldness in your spirit. The Lord is beginning to assure you. Yes, quite a number of you, when you watch these clips, the reason why you come back many times, you invite a friend of yours, is because it's things that the Lord has spoken to you already. You need to begin to believe that the Lord has called you. You need to believe, begin to believe that the Lord has, has lifted you up. You need to, be, to begin to believe that you are chosen of the Lord and a big part of the prophetic ministry. Many prophets, by the way, will never go out. Many prophets will never necessarily go and prophesy to people, but they will prophesy to dry bones. They will prophesy to nations from their prayer closets. They will begin to speak and to prophetically pray, to begin to, to realize uh, and suddenly they get a, a name of a country in their heart and they have a burden that they cannot shake and the Lord begins to give you a dream and you will begin to be the ones who prophetically burn revival, prophetically birth ministries without leaving your, your bedrooms, without leaving your, your living rooms, without necessarily standing on anybody's uh, pulpit. You will be on the altar of Yeshua bathing. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is a calling that the Lord is beginning to put in so many of you. And you need to know you are a prophet. But what you've been taught about prophecy is that you think that you need a microphone to be a prophet. You don't need a microphone. These are things that have just come the other day. The other day, you know, just lying on the couch, I was telling uh, the team that I was ministering to today about how I was lying on the couch. And, uh, you know, uh, my host has some really posh seats and she has these recliner seats, you know. So as we're weeping for Australia yesterday and today, I'm sitting on the recliner seat, very, very cozy, velvet, beautiful, uh, greenish, uh, grayish color, beautiful couches. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit says, lie on your side and begin to weep. And I lie on my side and I'm weeping. Then, you know, I love the way God has a sense of humor. And the Lord allowed me to hear the voice. And I can't tell you whose voice this was, but I believe it must be the saints in heaven that are allowed to see from time to time what's going on on earth. And I heard in our time, we lay on the floor uh, wearing sackcloth. Now they lie on recliner seats on the side. And I began to laugh. And I didn't say it yesterday, but today I told them that's the privilege we have today, you know. And however, it doesn't mean you have to 
to have the microphone, like I'm saying. It, it, it may mean that the Lord sends you to Sudan and you don't know anybody there, but you spend time a week fasting and praying, calling on the name of Jesus Christ, and you're crying for Sudan. You're crying for Sudan. You're weeping for Sudan. So that when the word of God says that the Lord looked for a man who would stand in breach, when the Lord looked for a man, a woman, who would stand in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not destroy it, the Lord would find you. The Lord would find you. The Lord would find you crying. Some of you will not leave your bedroom. Some of you will not leave your living rooms. That will be the prayer altar. That will be the place of prayer. And you know, the Lord is more than able to lift you in your spirit and take you into a nation in the spirit, praying and calling on the name of Jesus. And that nation is preserved because you heard from the Lord, oh dear young prophet of God, oh dear young intercessor of God, who is a prophet and you just don't know it. It is impossible to be an intercessor without the gift of prophecy. By the way, when you begin to intercede, and by the way, every child of God has the gift of prophecy inside of them. It's just that some people are called to truly be prophets. That is the office that they operate in. But every child of God, remember the word of God says, I believe it's, um, if you read John chapter from verse 14, chapter 14, and you read chapter 15, and you read chapter 16, it talks about the spirit of God and his role. And one of the things that it says, I, I believe it's chapter 16 that talks about that the Holy Spirit will not talk of himself. He will take what is of the Father. He will take what is of Jesus, and he will begin to tell us. He will begin to tell us the things that he sees in heaven. What is that? The prophetic. He be, will begin to tell us the things that are to come. What is that? Prophetic. You begin to get a feeling something is wrong. You may not know what it is. And you're groaning. The Bible talks about in Romans 8 with moans and groans that cannot be understood. We bath the glory of God. The spirit of God prays to us. The spirit of God is a prophetic spirit. He looks at the future. He looks at the current but also looks at the future. You begin to pray over something. When Elijah looked, you know, and there had been no rain. All of a sudden, he's the one who had commanded there shall be no rain. And then all of a sudden, he looked. He saw the the, the the cloud at the size of a man's fist. He said, it's going to rain. Go and tell Ahab it's going to rain. And these are the end time armies of God. They are prophets in their own right in terms of what God has called them into. And you are the saints of God, the prophets of God, the children of God. Stop running from man of God to man of God saying prophesy, prophesy. No, you're going to diviners and the diviners can see greatness in you. Today, this morning, the Lord was telling me, tell my children, that it doesn't take a prophet to lay hands on them and say, you are great. You're already great. That is fact. It's not prophecy. It is fact. Remember the video that I did some time back, if you haven't watched it, I was talking about the greatness in us that scientists have realized uh, recently, and you can actually Google it, about uh, diamonds from, from human uh, remains, yeah, the bones of human beings. And because we are made of, I don't know what percentage carbon, I've actually forgotten it, but the Lord um, ministers to us. And, 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 and it's amazing to find out that scientists have discovered that the human being is made of a percentage of diamond. That if you take the human bones through a process, through a procedure, and, and burning it at a particular heat, uh, you know, uh, it's actually what is left is diamonds. God made us out of diamonds. If you haven't found that, 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 that um, uh, video, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's not a very, uh, this a video of a long time ago, it was maybe, well, like maybe about 30 videos ago. <laughs> time ago but it's there um if someone can tag us for those of you that are so you know some of you are so in touch with videos eh? you know exactly when i mentioned this video you know exactly which it is and by the way that's how god uses us eh? with and that's a ministry in itself please tag us the video that talks about bones so that i can share it i don't even remember what the title was i was in mombasa or had just come from mombasa and that's the thing so even a diviner, even the devil looks at you and he knows you're great. So it doesn't take a prophet to tell you you're great. That is not prophecy. For some of you, no one has ever told you you're great. And you don't believe God when he tells you that you're great. When he tells you you're fearfully and wonderfully made. So a diviner comes from all sorts of places and comes and tells you, you know, you're great. You're great. I see greatness in you. I see you doing mighty things. That is the word of God. That's what the word of God says. That's not prophecy. That's what the word of God says, that great things shall come from them that believe. You shall do great things in his name. You shall do greater things than the Lord did. So guys, we, 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 we really, 
need to take a chill pill on this issue of running to prophecy and looking for prophecy and looking for a word and looking for something. Do you know that when the Lord gives a real prophet the word of God for you, they will even find you? They will find you. Yeah, I was talking with a friend who was telling me about how she was running a shop and a prophet found her in that shop and gave her a word, a word that changed her life. I mean, seriously, what are the odds? She's never seen that person again. And the Lord, don't you believe that the Lord loves you that much? That the Lord loves you enough? And then please, guys, watch out for the people who move as diviners, reading people's stars, reading people's palms, reading signs and, and astrology, and then they locate you on Facebook by just looking at your picture. They are able to tell this is greatness, and then they inbox you, and they begin to tell you things, but they are diviners, and you begin to say, Amen! <laughs> Amen! Thank you, Jesus! Amen! No, you test every spirit. You test every spirit. When I met these pastors today, I had prayed up. And when I came and we sat, you know, at first I was just watching and everything. Until the Holy Spirit says, it's okay. They are of me. Stop believing every wind. Stop believing every tide. Some of you will not get to the place that the Lord wants to take you because you keep receiving from every place. And it's because you don't know who you are. You don't know how God has used you. You don't know how important you are in the kingdom of God. So the enemy uh, releases diviners. The enemy releases the wrong people because you don't know who you are. Children of God, saints of God, may you know your identity in Christ. May you know how truly precious you are to Christ. May you know that God is more than able to speak to you himself. And the Lord is able to confirm through another and another. And when the glory of God comes, let me tell you, when somebody truly prophesies according to the move of God, it will not be the flesh. Oh, I felt goosebumps. Goosebumps for who? If you're not going to change, if it's going to cause you to still continue to walk in the wrong thing, then what prophecy was that? The purpose of prophecy is also to come face to face with God. And there is, let me tell you, there is no way that you can be walking in a relationship of fornication. There is no way that you can be adulterous. There is no way that you can be moving in offense and you're not forgiving people. And you're not, you know, uh, walking in the fear of God. And someone comes and tells you, I see greatness in you. I see the glory of God in you. A real prophet will tell you, I hear the Lord saying, repent. I hear the Lord saying, return to him. I hear the Lord saying he wants to do great things in you, but there is a hindrance. Let me tell you, prophecy is not always a good thing in terms of it's not always. Woohoo! Let me tell you, when someone tells me I have a word for you, God for you, for you I am a prophet. I'm an apostle, but I move mostly in the, uh, the prophetic. But when someone tells me I have a word of God from, uh, a word for, uh, from God for you, no matter by the way their age, no matter who they are, whenever someone tells me I have a word from God for you, I fall on my knees. I always fall on my knees and begin to weep. And I say, Father, I pray I haven't sinned. I pray I haven't offended you. I pray it's not a word of judgment. God, if it is, forgive me in advance. And I'm a prophet. But I shake and I fear whenever I hear I have a word. Because I know that when a true word comes from God, it is a word that will always change your life. The Lord does not give prophecy so that you can feel good. The Lord does not give prophecy so that you can start saying, I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. No, the Lord does not give prophecy so that you can say, oh, yes, goosebumps. No, the Lord gives prophecy as a compass. Prophecy wakes you up from wherever you are. Prophecy confirms the word of God. Prophecy reveals to you a shifting. But let me tell you, a real prophecy from God will always move move you from where you are to a different place. And it's all, not always a place of comfort. Remember when you truly serve God, when you truly seek the Lord, when you truly desire from the Lord, when God begins to truly use you, he will send you to the wilderness. The Lord will send you to the wilderness. The Lord will separate you from friends. The Lord will separate you from things as you know it. The Lord will separate you from family members. The Lord will pluck you from your comfort zone. That's the Lord. And so when prophecy is released, you also need to be prepared to be able to receive that prophecy. And it's time. Let me tell you, when true prophecy is released, you will begin to be a little afraid. Because you know it is true prophecy and it can be just about anything when it comes from the Lord. And yet when you receive from the Lord, you know, God, I must honor you. 
God, I must obey you. And the moment prophecy is released, you will not be the same again. You cannot be the same again. That word burns like fire. Even if you begin to forget it, it burns like fire. I was talking to a lady today who told me the word of God came to her 19 years ago. You are going to go to a country called Australia. She was a teenager, 19 years. That is prophecy. And you hold on to it for those 19 years. You try and nothing works. You move and nothing works. And you will go through the wilderness of saying, God, did you speak? God, did you say? You will go through a period of feeling like God was dangling something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, but God, you said. But God, you spoke. You know, that is prophecy. It, takes, it will take groaning. It will take bathing. It will take pain. It doesn't just, woohoo, hallelujah, glory. No, no. <laughs> And that's what a lot of us don't understand. Prophecy is a seed that is deposited into your spiritual, um, uh, spiritual womb. Spiritual womb. It is deposited. And then it continues to grow through prayer, through obedience, through honoring the Lord, through believing that the Lord did speak. And you're protecting that baby. And that baby doesn't always take nine months to be popped like the human baby. Sometimes that baby will take 19 years. Sometimes, you know, I remember the Lord speaking a word on my life. Uh, oh God, how many years ago was that? That is 20, 20 this, this year will be what? 1997. 1997, that is 21 years ago. 21 years ago, three cycles of perfection. Seven is the number of God's perfection. Three cycles of perfection. And you people are saying, yeah, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Making prophecy become such a small thing, such a tiny little speck. Prophecy is the compass of God. Prophecy is the word of God. And it does not return to God null and void. It must achieve that which it was sent to achieve. It must accomplish that which the Lord sent it to accomplish. It does not return to God idle. It does not return to God empty. And when the word of God comes, we must listen. I remember being sent to a church in Addis and, you know, they were very excited because in Addis they also have said this move where they love prophets. So they were told a prophet is coming. They don't know an apostle. They know a prophet. A prophet is coming. A prophet is coming. And when I got into that church, I remember seeing the church looked so dark and I'm asking the Lord, what's up? What's up? And let me tell you, there was a power blackout immediately. I also got into the church, but there was enough light coming from outside. And then I kept asking the lady who was supposed to be interpreting for me. The Lord is saying they sin in this church. The Lord is saying this church has moved away from them. Oh, I'm going to offend. Ethiopians are very sensitive about offense. They are very sensitive about good manners and behaving as a host and as a, a visitor. You don't go abusing people. And I was weeping and I'm asking her, Pastor Betty, how am I going to tell them? Pastor Betty, how will I tell them? And she was those of you just have to, you just have to. And finally, when I got onto the pulpit, by the way, do you know the Lord moved in such a way that even when I quoted the scripture that I was going to minister on, the Lord caused it to be the wrong quotation. So the people went to the place that I spoke on and they were shaking. It was read in Hamaric, I didn't read it in English. And they spoke and it was a word of judgment. And then I went on and talked about, and I'm looking at the congregation and they're looking scared. And I'm like, is it that they have this, this the, uh, they are discerned that I've come with a word of judgment, that I've come with a word of, of that they need to repent and everything. Hey, you're joking with God. He caused me to quote the wrong scripture in Ezekiel. And that scripture was talking about how people's flesh will be torn and how their heads will be cut off. <laughs> is prophecy for you even if you want to say one thing you will end up saying the thing that the lord has sent you for if you're truly a vessel of god then by the time i told them the lord is saying repent let me tell you i didn't even finish the sentence people got on their knees i was like wow and they began to weep old people young people they were weeping the whole church even the pastors everybody fell down and they began to sob from their hearts and then the lord released them and says, you have obeyed. You have honored my word. Now, let me tell you who you are. And then that's when I realized that the scripture I had given was the wrong one. I told them, I'm sorry. The right scripture was. <laughs> After they had repented. <laughs> and then that's when I said, the Lord says, you are gatekeepers of this nation. 
You are gatekeepers of this nation. The Lord sent me to a church that has salvation, healing, deliverance. Unite with them because they have a role. The Lord sent me to another church that is the fire of God, the evangelist. Unite with them as well and let the glory of God fall in Ethiopia as you're the gatekeepers. And I began to pray over them as the gatekeepers and by the way, there were so many miracles in that church. People were healed. People were delivered. The Lord moved in powerful ways, in great ways. And the Lord did exploits in that church for his glory. And that is the purpose of the prophetic. That story of reducing it is prophesy daddy, prophesy papa, prophesy mama. And by the way, you know what? I don't know what you guys went and told your pastors. But yesterday, somebody forwarded me a clip where they're saying that there's a woman pastor. There's a woman of God in Nairobi who is saying that people are not anointed of God. Who is saying that people are diviners. Who is daring to rise against the man of God, against the woman of God. I laughed my head off. I said, yes. And we will continue to stand in the gap and we will continue to announce it and we will continue to declare it. We are the gatekeepers of our nation and also the nations of the world. As we take our positions, we will not allow diviners in the church. And how are we going to do this? A lot of teaching, a lot of teaching, a lot of teaching. Let me tell you, I have never been in a place where people shout, prophesy. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit shuts down. He shut down. How can a human being tell the Lord when to speak? How can a human being speak to the creator? The word of God talks in Isaiah, I forget Isaiah where, that it talks about that the creation cannot command the creator. The clay cannot begin to tell the creator, what have you made? Just like the, mother, the, 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 the child cannot begin, nobody can begin to tell a mother, what have you birthed? What have you given? So in the same way, those are things that are coming from West Africa. Those are things that are coming from, 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 from countries in West Africa where divination have stepped in. And the thing with West Africa, by the way, you guys, is West Africa has a great move of God. Nigeria, great move of God, powerful move of God. But unfortunately, there is also a lot of occult that is coming from those places because wherever there is a great move of God, the enemy always tries to raise up counterfeits. Can we be discerning? Can we be able to tell? And by the way, you're going back to the false prophet to go and tell them, the woman of God said, you are a diviner. For what purpose? Who, being released by a diviner, being released for what? You flee from divination churches and you go and you separate the soul tie and you break that connection and you, you don't tell them that you're risking your own life. You're, you're bringing a battle that is not even necessary. But really, we are ready for it. So yesterday, a video, I saw a video and the, 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 these people were calling one another. Have you ever seen? I've never seen anything like it. What has happened to men of God? Seriously. What has happened to men of God? I can't imagine that now I'm trying to prove that, I, you know, say, for example, uh, I love using the example of uh, Teresia Wairimo, who I love so much. I, somebody begins to say, oh, you know, evangelist. Somebody said evangelist Teresia Wairimo is false. And then I begin to call another pastor in another place. My sister, my sister, can you imagine? They said, that is mockery. That is mockery. If you're truly a man of God, if you're truly a woman of God, we shall know you by your fruits. Let the glory of God show. You know, today, um, as we sat around the dining table and I'll post a photo um, of, uh, of the people that we were praying with today, when we said, let us pray, I, I, I love giving the opportunity for a man of God, woman of God. Before I minister at their pulpit, I love giving them the opportunity to pray because when you pray, you know. So the man of God just said, hallelujah. Hey, the Holy Ghost. I began to weep. The glory of God just fell so powerfully. You know, those that are of the Lord are known. They are seen. They are not heard. The glory of God moves. The power of God moves. When you watch the video, the glory of God will meet you wherever you are. You will fall on your knees. You will repent even without me touching you, without me laying a hand on you. You will know that the Lord is speaking. You will know it's the voice of the Lord and it's telling you, turn away from sin. Jesus is coming soon. Return to the cross. Return to the place where you met the Lord. I don't need to make phone calls. I don't need to start confirming that somebody's a man of God or woman of God or anything like that, that is counterfeit. And that in itself, by the way, shows fear. It shows intimidation. And I'm glad they're intimidated. Let them run out of our nation. Let them run. Now you know why you're not making headway. Because we are coming against you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. We are coming against you in the spirit of Elijah. Where we are saying, let the prophets of Baal come. Let the prophets of Asherah come. You dare come into our nation. Dare plant churches in our nation. 
after we have fasted, after we have prayed, after we have wept for this nation, nearly losing our lives, crying to God, weeping to God for our nation and revival time comes and you dare try to come and raise up wicked altars. You dare to come to try and raise up altars of human beings for them to be raised up a mighty prophet, mighty man of God. Might. There is nothing mighty about us as human beings. We are clay. How can clay be mighty? It is the one who is in us that is great. It's the one who is in us that is bowed before. It's the one who is in us that shall be seen and Jesus shall be formed in our nation and the nations of the earth as soldiers of the cross of Jesus Christ we raise up this sword of the spirit and we are at war yes some of us are saying that we are men of God women of God we shall they shall be known the sheep of Jesus Christ shall not be confused they shall not be swayed they shall not be moved and then they dare to add oh you know I think you're afraid. I think, I think that woman of God is afraid because they are afraid that we, sh you know, the Lord will uncover them because of tithes and offerings. Which tithes and offerings are we receiving online? We are giving freely as we have received. Ministering to over 100,000 people per week for free. People will never meet. People will never know. People will never give back. People will never give to the house of God. We minister for free. When we don't want to minister for free, we will have churches and say, you must come to the church. You must come to the church. Online ministry is giving freely and letting the word of God out freely as we have received freely we give do not try to confuse the saints of God let me tell you the Lord will uncover you the Lord will expose you because one thing that we do especially as women of God any ministry that has women of God we are weak in the physical and we know it so what we do is we hold on to our Messiah I'm writing a book, The Woman and Her Messiah. We hold on to Jesus. We are forgiven much. He is our husband. We understand it. And as women of God, we know that the only might we can have is the might of Jesus Christ. And we war on our knees. And every battle that is prayed on our knees is won for the glory of the kingdom of God. And we are not going to fight. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God. We will flush you out of our nation through prayer. We will expose you on our knees in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, the miracles, the false miracles will backfire. The saints of God, will, the eyes will be opened. And for those who are truly of God, we will equally lift you up on our knees. No matter which ministry you're in, you are our friend. You are our sister. You are our brother. We will pray for you. We will walk with you. We will give to you. We will stand with you. We will come to you. We will help you to grow the ministry of God. And we will encourage one another. The time has come. It is the end time. We are uniting. The Lord is uniting his generals. They are few and far apart, but they are mighty in God. And many are those who are still in the caves and the Lord is bringing them out. Do not try to challenge us because you're challenging the spirit of the living God. You know, yesterday after I watched that video, that I started laughing and laughing and I ran down to my host and I said, oh, I need to forward you something. I need to forward you something. Somebody is talking about me because the moment that the person spoke and I love that he kept saying woman of God, woman of God. Uh, yes, they know. Even the demons know you are a woman of God. You are a man of God. But they know there's a time I came from mighty deliverance, mighty move of God. And then Satan dared to appear and ask me and he addressed me, woman of God. How does it feel to set so many people free? And yet, no. And then he used something that was private and personal to try and to, to, to make me feel discouraged and all that. And I began to say, I set nobody free. Jesus sets everybody free. And Jesus, whoever he does not set free, that is fine by the Lord. Even though ministers of God have often, there are many ministers of God in healing ministry, but their children are sick. Many ministers of God in healing ministry, well, they themselves are on a wheelchair. We do not tell God how to move. He is the Lord. He is king. He is God. So yes, they know. Woman of God. Man of God. They know it. They know it even when they try to discredit you. They call you by your title because they know that demons in them will say it. Woman of God. Man of God. But we call you diviners because if Jesus is not Lord, if Jesus is not speaking through you, Satan is speaking through you. And we say, you know what? Not on our nation. Not on our nation. Not on our land. And as time is moving, we are adopting nation after nation and we are shutting you out. Repent. Return to the Lord. The Lord is merciful. He is forgiving. These things that we have moved into thinking that we have to be diviners, thinking that we have to lie to people. So that churches can grow. That is a lie from the pits of hell. That is a lie from the pits of hell. The Lord, for a short time, 
People were blind for a short time. People were hungry and they were looking anywhere. But the Lord is raising up his children. Jesus said, not a single one, Father, that you give me shall be lost. So what do you think that means? They will not end up in those divination places. They will shut down. Turn to the Lord. You're a prophet of God. By the time you turn into a diviner, you're a prophet of God. You just tapped into the wrong thing. Repent. Turn to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. By the way, there are so many of them that are shutting down. People are breaking down. And you know the saddest thing is? They are souls. These pastors are souls. These diviners are souls. These people are souls. Souls for the kingdom. The other thing that is emerging um, these days is that there is so much shepherding and the shepherding is smothering the flock. What shepherding am I talking about? Shepherding is done by pastors in the fivefold ministry. You have pastors. And now it's gotten to the place where pastors are trying to shut down the other ministries. How can you be a pastor without an apostolic ministry? How can you be a pastor without a prophet? How can you be a pastor without a teacher? How can you be a pastor without an evangelist? Every office in the fivefold ministry has its role. And the fivefold ministry is given for the greatness of the church of Jesus Christ. So that the glory of God may be seen. So that the church may move. So that the saints of God may be equipped for works of service. If you insist that there's only pastoral, the prophetic cannot speak. If you insist there's only pastoral, we don't want apostolic. If you insist we don't want tongues, then the glory of God will leave. And you'll have an Ichabod situation. The glory of God will live. You will not have a cupboard. There is no cupboard without the fivefold ministry. There must be. There must be a fivefold ministry in Sozo Church. We have prayed through until the Lord has birthed the fivefold ministry. We have teachers. When I've been away, the, the church at the moment, there's a teacher. Who is teaching the word of God, teaching the saints of God until the saints of God are finally moved into a place where they're not thinking it's only the apostle who can preach. It's only the apostle who can preach. There was a time I would travel and people would not come to church. There's a time I would travel and I'd have to hide that I'm traveling. But no more. Now we have prophets standing at the pulpit, ministering in the prophetic, not prophesy papa, prophesy mama, not that kind of prophecy, but drawing a roadmap for the Lord, saying this is what the Lord says, this is the direction the Lord says, this is the land we are spying on, even as we're heading into that land. We have evangelists. Our dear darling Mapenzi is an evangelist, going out there, ministering. She's always bringing people into the house of the Lord. Evangelist, beautiful woman of God. Evangelist, for the sake of God. We have pastors, our dear Pastor Carol, and others who are growing bit by bit, beginning to pastor. Pastor in the children's church, pastoring people, teaching them, you know, as shepherds, loving them, holding them, cuddling them, you know, uh, ministering the ways of the Lord to them, day by day. The fivefold ministry is critical. If you insist that it's only pastors who are there, you're going to shepherd people to death. You're going to shepherd people to a spiritual death and then to a physical death in the name of Jesus. I'm preparing a word right now. Today, this is the last word, by the way, on the prophetic ministry uh, that the Lord has given me in terms of the role of the prophetic. I believe you've understood the prophetic ministry more as a result of this. You've understood the holiness of the prophetic office. By the way, let me tell you the thing, and, and, and I need to say this. Just before a prophetic word is released in the church, there is an environment. And normally the environment is an environment of worship. An environment of worship. And then normally the prophetic normally comes through silence. You find a silence and suddenly when the prophet begins to speak, you will feel it from here. You know, the middle of your head up here, your hair will stand all the way to your toes. You feel hairs rising. That's the prophetic ministry because it's the voice of God. It's God speaking through a human being. Sometimes the voice of the person will even change. I have found that there are times, uh, you know, and I can tell very often who is speaking, whether the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, based on the sound of my voice. Whenever the Father speaks, my voice changes. It's, I sound like a man. I sound like a man, and it's normally so scary. People will normally fall. And even for me, I, I normally at that moment, I'm being up, uh, held up by the Spirit of God. Otherwise, even I feel like I want to hide. The Father hardly ever speaks, by the way. He's uh, out of the, the, the Godhead. He's the quieter side of the Godhead. Very often, because when he speaks, it sounds like thunder. Yeah? And so normally when he speaks, he's spoken through me a few times. But my voice, it becomes so heavy. It sounds completely like a man, very often. 
And you know, this is the father speaking. And normally, I, I found that when the Godhead speaks, they, they say, they announce, I am so and so. I am the one who was, who is, who is to come. Not just, oh, you know, you're just saying da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. Normally, when prophecy comes, it is revealed. You will hear, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Or this is what I hear God saying. This is what God is saying. And then normally, even the voice of the person, it changes because you're just a vessel. And for those of you who got born again earlier in the 70s, 60s, 80s, you know what I'm talking about. Even in the 90s at some point, you know what I'm talking about. When a prophet took the microphone, you didn't need to be told this is a prophet. They would begin to speak. Sometimes even they would not know that they're a prophet. And when they speak, you can't even move. You may try to stifle the glory of God. And if you try to stifle the glory of God, let me tell you, judgment comes. Judgment comes. But very often, you can't move. And normally, the prophetic comes with an action. Prophetic action. Like today, when the Lord gave me a word to speak, it was so on point to these pastors. And after that, we couldn't move. We spent time just bowing, saying, have your way. Lord, you can't move. You can't. The Lord has just spoken. You need the grace of God even to get off the floor. And normally by the way, the church will fall. Watch are these stories nowadays of, yeah, prof, can I prof, prophesy? Can I prof? What rubbish. Bringing drama into the house of my father. We refuse it in the name of Jesus Christ. When you're prophesying, let me tell you, the, 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 the way the glory of God moves inside of you, you can barely stand. Let alone ask, can I prophesy? What do you mean, can I prof? <sighs> The drama in the house of God. The house of God is not a circus. It's a house of prayer for all nations. It is a holy ground. Where sometimes we have only one shot. We have only one shot. If you haven't watched my video called One Shot, maybe watch that video called One Shot. And let's stop turning the house of God into a circus. Sometimes God will allow a Muslim to come into the house of God. And you have one shot. Are you going to turn it into a circus? Do you not realize that you will face judgment before the Lord? That the Lord sent one? And you failed to be able to reach them because you are caught up in the circus of can I prophesy, prophesy? And telling people to bring money so that you can prophesy? Oh, beloved, let the things of God that are sacred not be cast to the pigs and cast to the dogs. The word of God says we should not cast our pearls to the pigs because they'll trample them underfoot. We don't take bread and throw it to the dogs. What belongs to the children? We don't take it. We don't throw it to the, to the dogs. Unless somebody wants to declare like, you know, the man, the man of God in the Bible that was so hungry for God and said, even the dogs eat, you know, and the person was saying, I don't have a place around the table of the Lord. It's one of the most humble prayers in the Bible. <sighs> prophecy is sacred. Let's stop casting it to pigs. You know, I don't know, you put a prophecy there and then people start debating about the prophecy. When the Lord speaks, who are these people who are coming to start giving their opinion about it? What opinion? I remember when the Lord gave us the prophecy about the nation of Kenya. You know, the Lord was very clear. He's not looking for likes. He's not looking for loves. He's not looking for you to say, oh yeah, amen, glory to God. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. And it came to pass. There are people who to date will not talk to me. There are people to date who are terrified because the word of God does not come to negotiate. The Lord says, I have appointed so and so. He's not looking for a vote. And that's the problem with the diviners. We have turned prophecy into a thing where people need to confirm. So you shout and there's like a, a, a soundometer. You know, like those dance programs and those dance, dance things where people shout and cheer. What? Then you win according to the loudest of cheers. That's not prophecy. You can all keep quiet. You can all say that's not of God. But when the Lord has spoken, the Lord has spoken. And it passes. It comes to pass. The other thing that people say is, oh, you know, sometimes prophets miss it. No, prophets don't miss it. Prophets don't miss it. It's not patapotea, okay? And that is a Swahili word for find it, lose it. Patapotea. It is not patapotea. When the Lord speaks and you say, thus saith the Lord. Either the Lord has spoken or the Lord has not spoken. And when the Lord says that this place shall be struck, this place shall be struck. 
unless you pray. And when you pray, then there's a shift. Do you remember the word that the Lord gave us about Kenya being given into Babylon? I remember it was on the 20th of, of, of October. If you haven't watched it, you need to go to 20th of October. Scroll down to the video for 20th of October last year. And the Lord spoke judgment and said, unless you pray, Kenya is being handed over into Babylon that morning. And by evening, people had actually panicked and cried to God and prayed and stopped with the attitude. You know, remember last year, people were, those, those who are tribal were, were excited. Oh yeah, we now don't have to pray because God has said so and so is going to be the president. But it was a tribal kind of approach. And the Lord said, no, I will hand you over to Babylon. And by the end of the night, the Lord told me, they finally have heard. They are finally praying. They are finally calling on my name. And of course, that video had people who are very excited, tribalists who are very excited that Kenya would be handed into Babylon. You know, it's so sad when we think that the word of God is about guessing, is about patapoter, is about figuring out what is going on. But if you're not from our country, feel free to use the word patapoter. Sounds cool, doesn't it? Yes, like hakuna matata. Patapoter, the word of God is not about patapoter. So when the Lord had changed and the Lord had said, the judgment that I had spoken, I have heard your cry. We got back online and said the Lord has spoken and he said he has had mercy upon this nation. So it's not about guessing and then saying, oh, you know, sometimes prophets miss it. One of the signs that somebody is a false prophet is that they prophesy a lie. They prophesy something and it does not come to pass. How is it prophecy? If sometimes it fails, sometimes it misses. If the person is repenting, saying, oh, you know, uh, I fell, I have sinned, I have failed, that is different. But starting to say, oh, you know, sometimes prophets miss it. No, prophets don't miss it because they listen to the voice of God and they know the voice of God. And by the time you stand up to say, that saith the Lord, let me tell you, you have cried, you have wept, you have sought the Lord. Sometimes you have even told God, God, can I not see it? Can I not see it? I mean, I remember standing as the Lord said, go and announce that Donald Trump will be president. And I was shaking. I know the video doesn't show I was shaking. I was shaking. I was saying, God, what if I don't truly hear your voice? I said, God, I will know if I hear your voice, but unfortunately, I'll know with the rest of the world. And I said, God, it's fine. You have spoken to me. I have to obey you and prophesied. And of course, you know, by the way, when I first prophesied, if you check that video, there was a lot of silence, a lot of silence. And then after he became president, that's when people started coming to now know the page, like the page, get to figure out the page and all that. You will prophesy and it's a loan, loan, L-O-N-E, it's a loan area. Prophecy is not popular, by the way. True prophecy is not popular. True prophecy is feared. The prophets who are feared, the prophets of old who are feared, people who are scared of them, and those who are not scared of them mocked them. Prophets are not popular. If you're a prophet and you're popular and people think you're so awesome and wonderful and they're not even turning, you know, to the Lord, there is a problem. There is a problem. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today, you guys have been very, very quiet. I pray that you have really, truly received of the Lord. I'm not seeing any likes that tell me at least you are there, but I'm seeing the numbers <laughs> that are continuing to tell us we are there. Uh, as I return back to Kenya, we are going to grow more in the, in the online ministry. For those of you that love the online ministry, for those of you that are far and you've been asking the Lord, the Lord has spoken a lot about the online ministry. We're going to be investing a lot in the online ministry. And by the way, if you'd like to give on to the online ministry, we need to buy specific cameras. We need to buy specific things because the Lord is saying more and more as we get to the end time, there will be a lot of online ministry so that we may be able to reach uh, hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people. Because when we go online, we normally minister to. You'll find that on a week, we will minister to over 100,000 people whenever we go online to minister. So can you imagine if every week we're doing 100,000 or more, then the Lord will begin to speak more. The Lord, the other thing the Lord has told me is that he will begin to give me word and he has already begun to give me word for different nations. So for those of you who are in different countries, we will pray, we will seek the Lord and we'll begin to speak about your country, speak into your nation so that the prophetic can begin to give you a roadmap on how to pray, how to stand, how to walk. For those in Australia, what the Lord is saying about Australia is that the time for revival has come, uh, but the gates of Australia have been closed to men and women of God for a long time and it's time for us to speak 
speak to the gates of Australia to begin to open the way for men and women of God, for great men and women of God to come into this nation. Shut the gates to the wicked, but raise up the gates for the righteous. And then, of course, the Lord is speaking about demons that have held on to this nation to a point where it has come to a place where it's almost an atheist nation. And the Lord is saying we need to give them the marching orders and tell them, come out of this nation, get out of this nation. This nation belongs to the Lord. And of course, enter into serious aggressive warfare and win Australia for Jesus. Revival is coming to Australia. Australia is one of the nations that is marked for the end time revival of God. Australia is, is on the on board, on the board for revival. It's one of the nations. Keep watching it, pray for it, and you will see the glory of God. Particularly, the Lord is very, very clear that he has marked Sydney. Sydney is marked for revival and for the glory of God to pour. And I bless God that he has connected us with the right people, uh, the right ministry. Uh, the Lord has already spoken to me about two other pastors I'm yet to meet, but the Lord has already shown them to me, and we will be meeting with them with time and ministering a lot, quite a bit actually next year. Um, not so much this year, but quite a bit next year. I'm hoping we can have a social session this year, uh, but as the Lord leads, already we have a, a place where we can have the social session. We will post the address. We will let you know exactly where we will be. Please Please let us join together from across the world and let us cover these nations that the Lord is speaking about revival. Kenya is earmarked for revival. USA is earmarked for revival. South Africa is earmarked for revival. UK is earmarked for revival. And of course, Australia is earmarked for revival. The Lord has been speaking. Let us cover them. Let us pray. Let us not forget that the, those who are of darkness, those who are of wickedness, follow. By the way, they follow the page. And what they do is to try and pick what God is saying so that they can try to destroy the work of God. So let the children of God take that mantle and run with it. Take that word and run with it. Let us be part of the end time army that births revival and the glory of God. Africa, by the way, is coming a light. Every nation is Afri in Africa. Even the, 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 the Muslim countries, they are being turned inside out. Africa is bursting with the revival of God. Every country in Africa, the glory of God is moving and, and rising. Amen. God bless you so much. I love you guys so much. I always tell you that. I love you so much. The Lord loves you so, so much. My prayer is that you begin to realize how precious you are to God, that you're not on this page by mistake. Invite your friends, invite your prayer partners, invite people so that we may have an online revival, that people may be able to go back to their churches wherever they are, revived through the personal revival, so that worship leaders may go and take the microphones and revival begins to fall in different pulpits all over the world. It shall come even from this online platform, and it is already being imparted on you, and you can already testify that the Lord is already doing a work in your life. Ever since we began also to do the online ministry, the Lord is doing a work in you. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. I need to let our hosts move on. I had said it was a very, very short whatever, but I can see it's 9 p.m. here. Amen. Shalom. God bless you so much. Thank you for watching. Please share the video and let it go out. Invite your friends also to like the page. Invite your friends to share the video. If you have friends, thank you so much. A number of you have been inboxing your friends who live in this part of the country. I've been fellowshipping with some who are showing me messages from a number of you uh, who you've been telling you must meet this woman of God. You must get together with her. You must pray with her. Thank you so much for being used as ambassadors of the Lord, for being used to gather together the end time army of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord look towards you and let his countenance towards you be gentle and kind as with all times with God. And may he bless you from Zion. May he provide for you everything that you need for life and for godliness for that is a promise of God. And May the Lord, without a shadow of a doubt, let you know that you are loved of him and that his hand is greatly upon you and upon your home and your family. Walk in the glory of God. Walk in the anointing of God and walk in boldness before the presence of God. You are a child of Zion. You are a child of the king. Begin to walk like one and know that truly you are.